If we look at the charts, the charts are still negative, right? I mean, there's no denying this, all right? You have a bear flag right here underneath this resistance line right here, all right? And any sort of downside move, we actually will have a small stopping point around 24,800, but really the big level is going to be in the 23,000 range. So 23,000 to 24,000. That's going to be your buy level for a bounce. Now, do I think that's the bottom? No. As of now, I'm undetermined. I still think we could go to new lows. Renowned technical analyst and experienced swing trader, Gareth Soloway, has maintained a largely bearish outlook on the cryptocurrency industry for an extended period. In 2021, Soloway expressed concerns about the leading cryptocurrency being overbought and predicted a significant correction in the following year. Throughout 2022, various macro and geopolitical events, along with industry-related collapses, further impacted cryptocurrency prices. Despite these developments, Soloway remained steadfast in his bearish stance, cautioning investors about the short-term prospects of the crypto industry. As we enter 2023, Soloway's sentiment towards cryptocurrencies continues to be predominantly bearish. He attributes the industry's stagnant sideways growth and recent price movements to the continued interference by U.S. regulators. According to Soloway, there are several signs indicating that the crypto market is still in a bearish phase, with the United States government intentionally keeping prices down by withholding suitable regulation for the cryptocurrency industry. One noteworthy sign, as Soloway explains, is the low attendance at this year's Bitcoin Miami conference compared to the previous year. While some attribute the decline in attendance to the crypto winter, Soloway blames it on the current state of the U.S. economy and dwindling interest in the cryptocurrency industry due to regulatory crackdown and lack of clarity from the government. Until these issues are resolved, Soloway firmly believes that the cryptocurrency industry will be unable to progress and achieve widespread adoption. I was bearish on Bitcoin before. I'm actually more bearish now, and I'm going to explain why. So number one, I've been talking about, first of all, let's go back about three, four weeks. When we were at 30,500, I came on this, this stream, I came on the game plan, and I said, guys, unless you get above this and hold above 30,500, this is a dead short, this is a bear market rally. All right, what happened? We pulled back. We pulled back to this level on the charts right here. We then bounced, we pulled back, we bounced. We then broke and look at the bear flag we're making. Now, this is my problem. There's a couple things that I want to mention about Bitcoin. Number one, all right, I went to Bitcoin Miami. Attendance was down 43% at Bitcoin Miami. All right, this is one of the biggest events of the year for Bitcoin and crypto. And attendance was almost half of what it was the previous year. Now, is it partially that we're in a bear market? Well, maybe, but if you look back at when Bitcoin Miami was last year, price was only around 30,000 last year. So we were already well in a bear market, but there was, again, a huge amount of people. So it, you can't really blame it on the bear market. So the next thing that you would do is say, okay, well, is it the economy? And the answer is yes, it's probably partially the economy. Money is tighter for people. Inflation has taken a bite out of their disposable income. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that could be a factor. But I also think one of the un unthought of factors is that there's not as much excitement in crypto. And that's an issue. Crypto needs to have the excitement level. Now, if you go in, in, in our bubbles, the Twitter bubble, the Instagram bubble, you, of course you're going to have excitement, right? I mean, you're, you're going to a specific area. But the fact that the government is holding back regulation is very, very problematic. And to me, that's a negative. There are so many Bitcoiners out there that are these maxis and they're like but bitcoin rallied a hundred percent off of the lows like it has to be a new bull market and i'm like dude stop being doofuses like think back in 2018 bitcoin rallied 200 percent off of the lows and then still went back to the lows of 3500 so you have to look at history i know trust me i know there's this like oh i just wish oh i hope i can make a zillion dollars but you know what you're going to do you're doing yourself a disservice by not looking at facts, not being logical, not being strong in the mind and disciplined, you're actually going to cost yourself money. Now, again, is it saying that we couldn't have a bottom at 15700 No, of course you could. Of course you could. But let the charts guide you. The 30500 level is a level that I went on and I said, this is the Great Wall of China level. This is like the level where, you know, this is the end-all be-all level. And we didn't get through it. So you have to, what's that telling us? I mean, just simply put, what's that telling us? So understand that, guys. You got to understand that. The other thing I'll say on Bitcoin that I don't like about crypto right now is that crypto has no identity. It, it lost any form of identity over the last couple months. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look. The banking crisis hit. We saw banks collapsing, SV, SVB, collapse Silicon Valley Bank. Um, and what did Bitcoin do? It shot up. Well, guess what? 
a month later, Bitcoin, some banks collapsed again. All right, we saw WAL, Western Alliance, dropping 50%, PacWest dropping like 75%. Bitcoin went down. So Bitcoin goes up when some of the banks collapse, but then when others collapse, it goes down. Hmm. Well, that's not an identity. It's not telling us something. Okay, well, let's take another one. Let's talk about how Bitcoin right now, markets go up some days and Bitcoin goes up. Other days, markets go up and Bitcoin goes down. All right, well, now you got to say to yourself, wait, so is it a risk asset or is it a safety hedge? Is it the digital gold or is it a risk on play? And it's going up and down on both of them. There's no identity here. A significant event that has recently shaped the crypto market is the debt ceiling deal between President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Reports indicate that Biden and McCarthy reached a preliminary agreement during a phone call on Saturday to raise the debt ceiling for two years and cap spending. If approved, this two-year deal would enable the federal government to borrow money well beyond the November 2024 federal election. Voting on the bill is expected to commence later this week. Following the confirmation of the deal by Biden and McCarthy on Sunday, Bitcoin prices experienced a notable surge of nearly $2,000, reaching $20,432, its highest value in two weeks. However, the leading cryptocurrency has since dipped below $28,000. This agreement has the potential to further impact prices positively particularly as investors realize that suspending the debt limit for another two years provides the government with another opportunity to increase monetary supply. Renowned economist and gold enthusiast Peter Schiff warns that the deal, which allows for spending increases in various budget areas without supervision, could result in the U.S. national debt growing by at least $4 trillion in the next two years. Schiff sees this as a compelling reason to invest in Bitcoin. Now, let's return to Soloway's game plan broadcast as he delves into the U.S. government's intentions to gain control over the cryptocurrency industry. Now, I do think longer term, and let's be clear, longer term, I'm a big fan of the bull case. I think it does grow into its identity. I think it is the digital gold. But you know what's happening right now, guys? The government is stifling it. And they're doing it on purpose. I want to be 100% crystal clear. All right, look up this. All right, so we obviously know, and I'm going to just repeat this. I've said this before, but this is one of the most important things you'll hear on crypto, and it's fascinating. All right, so basically what you have in this situation is the government is doing a China play playbook. And what I mean by that is China, remember, China came out and banned Bitcoin. After they banned Bitcoin, what did they do? They released the digital yuan. Why did they do that? Well, they didn't want competition for the digital yuan. They wanted the digital yuan to gain traction in their economy, and therefore, it's, it doesn't. then once the big players are using the digital yuan, Bitcoin is not as much of a threat. Well, guess what's happened? Now they're starting to loosen the, that regulatory control and that ban on Bitcoin because the digital yuan has, has the power. It's now embedded in the Chinese economy. Well, take it to the U.S. now. The U.S. is saying, yeah, well... You know, and, and by the way, anyone who thinks that the Ripple decision isn't already made is like ludicrous. You think a judge really needs to sit for a year and think about things? I mean, really? I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. So what that means is the government is saying, don't release this, this view. Don't release your decision. And also, we're not going to give regulation. By the way, Coinbase is suing them for regulation, you know, you know, so they can figure it out. They're threatening to leave the country. We've already seen, you know, exchanges leave Canada because of this. But basically, look up FedNow. FedNow is a direct payment system that's going to be launching in literally weeks, I believe. And again, you can literally, it'll basically be a Cash App equivalent or a Venmo equivalent. And it's the beginning of the introduction of the CBDC. And the idea here is very simple. It's the government is not releasing regulation because once regulation comes out, check this out. Once regulation comes out, then the institutions will get involved. Once the institutions put billions and trillions of dollars into crypto, you can't undo that. So as long as they don't release this information, you know what's going to happen? then the big money sitting on the sidelines, heck, I'm not even willing to invest that much without knowing the rules in crypto. And they're waiting for FedNow to launch, the CBD to launch, the CBDC to launch. And then once that occurs, then you will get regulation. I would almost guarantee within weeks of this occurring, you will get regulatory framework in crypto. And by the way, one other thing, going to politicians, and I'm not a political dude right here. I mean, I just want to say this, but... If you look at, I was at Bitcoin Miami, we had presidential candidates speaking there. 
you know, uh, there was a presidential candidate yesterday on on um, Twitter that announced they're all trying to be like, oh, I'm pro Bitcoin. I'm pro Bitcoin. OK, I like that. I'm a fan of that. Good. But you know what? Maybe me, I'm just cynical, but I want to see if they get elected, if they still are. And I think it's, it's a one way to guarantee votes. And they know that. I want to know that when they get elected, if they get elected, they're still behind it. And that's my skepticism. So again, yes, it's great to hear. Let's see how it goes. The recent debt ceiling deal, after weeks of political maneuvers, serves as a reminder that politicians and policymakers always have an additional tool at their disposal. In the United States, this tool, no matter how enticingly and innocently presented, consistently adds to the nation's already enormous debt burden. When striking deals like this, policymakers prioritize their own political agendas over making tough but necessary decisions. In light of this, one can't help but question how long investors will continue to blindly support a failing economy and the traditional finance sector. Undoubtedly, such deals only hasten the arrival of the inevitable day of reckoning. We would love to hear your thoughts on Soloway's assessment of the cryptocurrency industry and the implications of the debt ceiling deal. Please share your comments and observations in the section below. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.